It is an October afternoon in the state of New York, and emergency workers are responding to a terrible car crash. Two vehicles are wrecked. Seemingly one had crashed into the other at an alarmingly high speed. Car crashes are hardly an unknown event. However, today, one of these vehicles is a less common type of automotive. It's a stretch limo. The death toll of the crash would be 20, making it the worst limo crash in US history. What's more, the location may sound a little bit familiar to you. It's school, Harry. Welcome to Plainly Difficult, and my name is John. This video wouldn't have been possible without my Patreon and YouTube members. If you'd like early access and add free access to my videos, then why not give it a try? Background. Limousines I've always found to be bizarre things. Here in the UK, you really only see them in three scenarios. Funerals, weddings and drunk teenager parties. Personally, I don't think they work here, as our roads in many places just don't suit long vehicles. Plus, the cars chosen for conversion aren't always the most exciting, unless it's an import. I mean, who would really get excited by a Vauxhall Omega Stretch? The reason why these such abominations exist is because limos are usually made from pre-existing vehicles. Usually, but unlike in the Omega case, it is a luxury vehicle. In his most basic form, a coach builder would cut the future limo in half, place it on an extended frame and add an additional section of metalwork and windows. Usually this is all done using pre-made limo kits. But such vehicles come with a little bit of a shortcoming, and I don't just mean the vehicle's now awful turning circle, that is its crashworthiness. Unsurprisingly, cutting up a car and adding a non-original section weakens its designed crash performance. After all, engineers of the donor vehicles haven't really planned for its in-stretchification. Regardless, today we're only looking at one limo, a limo that began its life in 2001 as a stock Ford Explorer. Constructed towards the end of the year 2000, the Explorer was purchased by a company called 21st Century Coachworks in Missouri. The Royal Limo Company of New York would purchase the vehicle post-conversion. The Coachworks added 148 inches to the vehicle's overall length, making it a whopping 30.9 feet long. More seats were added, changing the limo's classification to that of a bus. Seven of the eight OEM seats were retained, but the extras were side-facing bench seats and a bench behind the added privacy divider between the driver's cab and the saloon. These bench seats had lap belts, whereas the OEM seats retained their three-point seat belt. The weight of the vehicle significantly increased from roughly £8,600 to £13,565 when fully loaded. However, the braking system was kept stock. This is okay if the system is recertified with new braking tests post-conversion, but no record could be found of this later on by the NTSB. The limo saw a good deal of use over its nearly 17-year lifespan, accruing nearly 200,000 miles on the clock. With its mileage came wear and tear, and it was showing its age with multiple rust spots along the sheet metalwork around the time that our story really kicks off. This is Skullherry, upstate New York. It's not particularly the most disaster-free area. Back in 1987, it had a bridge collapse, which is why the name might be giving you a little bit of deja vu. Link to my video on it, it will be here. But today's disaster is a few miles down the road, much closer to the town of Skullherry, rather than the failed I-90 bridge. Roads around here have various changes in grade and are full of curves. This requires a lot more concentration and control than, say, a multi-lane highway, or what's known as an interstate highway over there in the USA. One such road vital for our story is the NY30, a two-lane highway sporting a lane in each direction, with a posted speed limit of 50 miles an hour. One particular section ends with a T-junction, where to the left of the NY30 continues on to Schoolhurry, and to the right, the NY30A takes you towards the junction of the I-88. The approach to the junction from the north on the NY30 is a downhill gradient, so much so that when driven, regular brake applications are needed to stop your car from running away from you. The junction had experienced a few crashes over a five-year period, 
with four occurring between 2013 and 2018. Not really the highest number, but still, accidents did happen there. And another will be added to this list, but this time with far bloodier results. The Disaster It is the 6th of October 2018, and a limo is en route from Amsterdam, New York to Cooperstown, New York, aboard a 17 passengers and the vehicle's driver. The limo is being operated by a company called the Prestige Limousine and Chauffeur Service. After a stint on the I-90, the vehicle turned onto the MY30A, then onto the MY7, then a right onto the MY30. As seen by witnesses, when it entered this road, the limo pulled over onto the hard shoulder. Its hazard lights were on. However, shortly after, the vehicle moved off to continue down the gradient of the MY30. As it descended down the gradient, the vehicle's speed began to increase and the driver couldn't slow the limo. The speed increased up to an estimated between 101 and 118 miles an hour, hurtling down the grade and with the T-junction closely approaching, ahead the driver spotted a 2016 Jeep which was waiting at the stop sign. Seeing this, he tried to avoid collision. He managed to swerve it but ended up going across the junction across both lanes and crashed into the driveway of a restaurant across from the junction. In doing so, it struck a parked Toyota. The speed was now reduced to around 80 miles an hour. The limo struck two pedestrians and crashed down into a ravine, finally coming to a stop facing in the opposite direction. The apparent sudden disaster left onlookers in shock, but soon enough, 911 were flooded with calls. The time was 1.55pm. Emergency workers from the Schoolherry Police, Ambulance and Fire Services would arrive starting from 1.59pm. Of the 20 involved in the crash, including the two pedestrians, only two survived the initial moments post-collision. They were whisked off to hospital but would later die of their wounds. Prestige, the company that was operating the limousine, was ordered to cease its limousine operations until further notice whilst an investigation would take place. The limo had been completely crushed in on its front, as such the deaths of all within is not very surprising. The crash would result in the limo's carcass being sifted through for clues as to why it sped through a junction at over 100 miles an hour. Was it driver error or mechanical fault? Well. That's what the next part of this video will hope to discover. The Investigation So, being a US road disaster, long-term friends of the channel, the NTSB, would be the ones investigating. And unsurprisingly, the first port of call would be the person behind the wheel on that fateful day. He couldn't be interviewed on the account of him being dead, but a license check found he held a New York Class A commercial driver's license, CDL with double and triple trailer and tank endorsements. But interestingly, no passenger endorsements, which was required for the type of vehicle he was driving on the day. It doesn't get any better. His driving history wasn't the greatest, with two traffic citations, one license suspension and one accident. Autopsy results detected the antidepressant bupropin. The anti-epileptic slash bipolar disorder medication, oxcarbazepine, and the heartburn medication, the matodine, as well as cannabis. But the NTSB couldn't find if the medications and cannabis in his blood would have impaired his ability to respond to the emergency situation. Next came checking in of the operator's licenses, and it just goes downhill from here. Prestige Limousine and Chauffeur Services should have checked the driver's license, so either they didn't care or didn't know or knew and didn't care about the driver's lack of proper endorsements on his license. Prestige in 2016 was refused its operator's license to operate limos in the state, but it had continued to work without authority. But the New York State Department of Transport didn't really take any action against the company. After some restrictions on the NTSB to view the limo, eventually photos and samples were taken of the crashed vehicle. The limo wreck was pulled over and the rust on the panelwork was just the tip of the death trap iceberg. The company had a fleet of four vehicles including the crashed limo. The others were three Lincoln Town Car stretch limousines. All were found to be not in the best usable condition with floors rusted out and general maintenance having been neglected for years. 
The crash limo was discovered to have, have been bought by Prestige on the 21st of July 2016. Between July 2016 and September 2018, it had been driven 11,212 miles. The rear brakes had been serviced in 2016 and 2018, but nothing was known about any repair works on the front brakes. Just a quick word on the brakes used aboard. They were pretty standard style disc and caliper arrangement, where the pads are pushed onto the surface of the disc via a hydraulically activated piston. If not maintained, they can seize. This is due to rust or brake fluid leaks, or just the pads wearing down to the point that they have no friction material left for them to work. One of the vehicle's rear brakes was found to be seized, and one of the brake lines had been crimped, which could reduce the flow of brake fluid which was the case, would have reduced the hydronic pressure required to effectively actuate the pistons in the calipers. This, in addition to the extra weight from it being a conversion and the brakes not being upgraded, left the limo with severely reduced braking capabilities. Pretty much the disaster was down to a rotten limo, but the rot came down from the head. Prestige, the company, at every level from regulatory body all the way down to the driver, had corners and regulations either ignored or cut. This culminated in the deaths of 19 innocent people. I don't count the driver here as he was complicit in the fact he didn't have the proper license. The NTSB would say in their findings, the National Transportation Safety Board determines that the probable cause of the Schoolhurry New York crash was prestige limousines and chauffeur services egregious disregard for safety. In dispatching a stretch limousine with an out-of-service order for a passenger charter trip, resulting in the failure of its braking system while descending the steep grade of New York State Route 30. The company's owner, Shahid Hussain, fled the country to Pakistan, leaving his son, Nalman Hussain, holding the bag and in the sights for criminal charges. He will be charged with 20 counts of criminally negligent homicide and second-degree manslaughter. After a plea deal was accepted and then withdrawn and delays due to COVID, Hussein would be found guilty of all 20 counts finally on trial on the 31st of May 2023. He was sentenced to the maximum of 5 to 15 years in prison. The company went out of business, thankfully, as well it didn't have much in the way of assets. The disaster highlights how if you ever book any kind of charter service that you need to check their credentials or if they even have any in the first place. As I'm sure there are hundreds of operations out there just like this. There's only a matter of time before an accident similar to the school hurry crash is repeated. Now, time for scale time is going to be a four. And this is what I've got for my bingo card. Do you agree? This is a plaintiff foot production. All videos on the channel are Creative Commons Attribution Share like licensed. Plaintiff foot videos produced by me, John, in a currently very, very warm corner of southern London, UK. And all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching and Mr. Music, can you play us out please?